Having been that guy that tried really hard in college, constantly picking up girls, had nothing, no money to my name, just a broke college student. And you have to put like an inordinate amount of work in just to convince women to sleep with you. And, you know, but depending on the variables of how attractive you are, how charismatic you are, the time, the place, you know, there's a lot of variables that come into place when you're just not, quote, high value man in order to convince a woman right? And I noticed uh, the quality of sex was completely different. So on occasion, you would meet women that had this genuinely like raw attraction for you, that no matter what came out of your mouth, she was ready for you and could not wait. I did experience it later in my life as I was getting older and started acquiring some things, experience, knowledge, just learning to calm down when talking to women, was too excited in my first few years trying and had some, you know, notches under my belt. And I noticed that the harder you try to convince a woman, the less fun it'll be in bed, the more hoops she's going to make you jump through because you have to constantly qualify yourself and convince her why. If you could build a life that you enjoy, that's full of your hobbies, that genuinely makes you happy, and then you happen to go into public spaces where there are women and you just meet women with no ulterior motives, don't even try to get laid, but when a woman notices you and starts taking interest and it's genuine, you will notice right away the difference. You're not even trying. She tries to take a space next to you. She tries to get conversations going. She'll try to carry conversations. She's over overtly flirty, touches you, right? Starts touching you and stuff, flicking her hair, whatever, blah, 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 all those little body language signs. And you don't even have to say much. Da, 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 going back to my place and thinking about doing this, let's go on a hike, blah, 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 here. She's just so for the ride. She just wants to hang out with you, is infatuated with you, and is excited to spend time with you. And the outcome is always incredible. Part two of that in in the world we live in is that women like that or interactions like that will save you from those false accusations. Because if you convince a woman to sleep with you, if you have to jump through the hoops, you're carrying the conversation, you have to make her laugh. You know she's on the fence. You might not be her type, but she may be looking for fun that night. So if you convince her, great. If you have one of those experiences and maybe say sex turns out to be bad or she regrets what she does because she had a man she didn't tell you about, that's your ass on the line now. You're one word away from getting arrested and going to prison. And I agree with what he said, man. It's just, it sucks to keep harping on this self-improvement, this and that. But until you've crossed that bridge, like you don't know what it's like. There's a reason people keep harping on self-improvement. And the problem is a lot of men are deluded when it comes to the word self-improvement. Like they think going to the gym here and there or reading a book here and there or getting a job that pays a couple dollars more is like qualifies as true self-improvement. Like, no, you're on your way. You're improving, but you haven't improved the baseline of what's needed. Like for me, dude, um, After all the sexual escapades and trying to fill a black hole from a relationship in college where I basically went from blue to red pill off one woman alone, I started really getting introspective of what I wanted in life and why I was chasing so many women trying to fill a a, basically a temporary pleasure. I was using a temporary pleasure to fill in a more permanent hole that needed real self-esteem building, real self-confidence building. And um, I would constantly, like, how do I explain this? I was, I was like many of you using women as a barometer for my self-worth. So the more women I betted, the more powerful I felt as a man, the manlier I felt. And my self-esteem was tied to those ex- escapades. So I was in constant search of them. So it led to this like kind of hookup phase in my life where I met so many women and experienced so many things. And I did everything I've ever wanted with women and all the fantasies, everything. And yet still I was left with like a black hole that did not feel fulfilled in any way. So finally after college, I ended up moving back on the East Coast, started my own business and like truly started focusing on myself and what I wanted. Learning what was really important to me, I wanted to foster relationships with more men, more like high quality, high performing men. After leaving college, I was kind of left alone, didn't really have anybody. So I started getting in tune with myself more. I started to go hiking, went out in nature, detached from like modernity, just give myself some time with myself to have some real conversations of what I wanted out of life. And a major change for me was here in Arizona when I met a friend I had been playing video games with since a teen. Um, he was really big into hiking. And and sure enough, as I, I have family here in Arizona that I visited, and then um, I messaged him like, hey, let's go hiking. I'm in town. 
And sure enough, we go to all these magical places with like waterfalls and the hikes are all like eight miles plus long. And it was just the most surreal experience ever. You know, and I'm sitting there wondering like, like what kind of legacy do I want to leave for myself? Like, what's the point? Why am I working so hard? What is the meaning of everything? What truly makes me happy? And so I started doing a lot of things that truly made me as a person happy. So I loved working out. I loved the, I loved the outdoors. So I started going to the gym all the time. I started running all the time. It was something I hated, but I had a newfound love for it. I started going on hikes with more and more guys that were like elite humans that just came from all parts of the world, but were high performers in whatever they decided to put their minds to and just learning about their stories and their history. And we're all going on these hikes in this like unfiltered sort of brotherhood slash like masculinity and like an openness, a male space where you can talk and let out whatever issues you had going on and nobody there would judge you. And it was all men that you highly respected. And you could just be yourself, man, and have a grand time, like literally some of the best memories ever. is just going out on hikes with these guys and just unloading dude life's problems and them, them the same, and you're just listening, and it's just a strong support net of positivity and like masculinity. And by the end of the hike, everybody is just ready to grind again and hit the ground running. Everybody knows what you need to do, how you need to eat, how hard you have to go at whatever discipline you're focusing on. We call each other out on bullshit, like, hey, um, you're trying to be the best at what? Say day trading. Well, okay, well, what do the best guys do? Oh, they're writing in journals. They're doing all of it. Like every day they're writing their trades. They're learning about new trading styles. They're writing in their journals every single trade. What happened? The signals they got. What time they traded. What piece of information came out. Every, every minute detail, you start seeing that. Success isn't really an accident, man. The people that are behind success have gotten there through like sheer will and almost a in, like an unhealthy obsession about the very thing they're pursuing. I remember I day traded for a little bit. <clears throat> I turned $20,000 into around 180 in I think three, four months, three, four months. And it was exactly that. Like that book you see behind me right there, that, that spell book, literally every page in it at one point was trades, was like the signals I got, what time of day it was, how much I made or lost, Everything I read prior to that day, like I had a little summary section, each day was like meticulously written down and so detailed that I could go back days, weeks, months at a time and go, okay, here's what happened there. Here's what I saw. And then I would develop like a little trading plan. I had my own my own system in place that I was starting to get most of my trades correct, something like 75%. And the ones I was getting wrong, I would immediately bail out of and like min and minimize the losses. And then the winners, I would cut half of it in profit and then let them run. And it either ran for huge profit or it came back against me. And then that was it. It zeroed out from there. But I always secured profit, minimized losses. I tried to trade with the least amount of, of emotional investment with my assets. And it worked, man. But that's just the attention to detail and the obsession you need for whatever you're pursuing in life. And most men, when they claim they're doing self-improvement, I mean, are you doing things like I have another smaller notebook like that too, another spell book looking thing is a journal where every day I write as much as I can, where every day or almost every day I sit down at night before bed and I try to write how my day went, how I felt, what my plan of action is for tomorrow, any negative emotions, positive emotions, things that may be lingering in my mind. I try to get it all out before bed. And I set little goals for myself every day. And that's another thing men don't do is when we set goals, I know a majority of people set these grand goals like year out, whatever. And nobody does like micro goals throughout the day. So me being a perfectionist, I have this problem. It's um, I beat myself up when I don't complete my goals. For example, I want to go to the gym and do a three hour full body session. If I go to the gym that day and I do something like one hour because I'm just gassed out mentally, I may not be there. The workout suffers, whatever. Then I beat myself up. I leave the gym. I consider myself a failure for that day. I couldn't even complete my workout. That spills over into the rest of my day. I may come over here and shoot and then the content might be trash. It just poisons my mind for the rest of the day. So something that's hard for me to constantly be mindful of, but I'm always trying to do is stop punishing yourself for not being perfect. And it's okay to just start, but it's even better to just do something to be better than yesterday. So if you do go into the gym for 30 minutes and you do a light workout because that's all you can muster, 
Good job. Great. That's better than whatever you did the day before if you didn't go. The day after, you're going to go again and try to do something. Just try. Do anything. If you manage to walk for 10 minutes instead of five, awesome, dude. The secret to this kind of success is that every single day, you're just slightly better than what you were the day before. And before you know it, in a year, two years, you're a completely different person. And that's all it takes. It's the consistency that's key because nobody starts like when you see your favorite, say, bodybuilder or whoever, Jack Chat, whoever the hell you look up to. They didn't get there in one day. Like the picture of what Amazon's HQ looked like and what Jeff Bezos looked like in the very beginning with that jacked up like Amazon curtain that was spray painted behind his cheap desk to what his headquarters looks like now. Dude, it's night and day. You can't expect to like make that giant leap without putting in the work. It's same to it's the same thing in every in the. Uh, in all aspects of life. It's just minute steps, one at a time, that ends up building something incredible. And most men are disheartened from even starting because it just seems so insurmountable. Like, dude, that guy's got a perfect body. I'm over here with flabs going to the gym. How the hell am I ever going to achieve that? And the point is, you're never going to achieve that guy's body. That's his. But you can create something incredible with yours. It's just going to take some time. So maybe use that guy's motivation like, hey, the end goal can be something like this, my version. And start from there. Go walk after eating a meal, 10 minutes every day. Next, limit junk food, sugar, whatever. Next, find a hobby you like. Learn something new. Keep the brain sharp. Read a book. Start jotting down ideas. When you have little spurts of like the light bulb going off, open the notes in your phone. Write down ideas. Do something. Challenge yourself every day to become a little better than you were yesterday, and I guarantee you your life will turn out for the better, far better than you could have ever imagined, man. Doorways get opened up that you can't even foresee because the path you get led down is a path you've never traveled before. Like this YouTube stuff for me, I would have never, never in a million years, if you would have told me even a year ago that I'd be doing YouTube videos and all these people would be watching me and writing me notes saying like, oh my God, thank you so much, dude, you're like the brother I never had, the uncle, the father I never had, like, thank you for teaching me on all this stuff about women and self-esteem. I would have been like, you're out of your mind, dude. I'm not making no YouTube channel. Nobody even wants to hear what I have to say. And that's the truth. And that would have been the truth back then. I had zero idea, dude. I just kept coming up with some new ideas. And all of a sudden, you know, an idea hits you of like, hmm, let's start a podcast. I mean, why not? Let's see if it works. Either they're going to listen or not. We'll find out pretty soon. And it's a doorway I would have never foreseen. But the fact is I tried and then this is where we ended up. Blessed for it. And thank you guys for tuning in. But going back, that was a huge rant. Going back on the women thing, man. This is why I try to preach to men like, yes, yeah, self-improvement, blah, yes. But when you build a life that you're proud of, that gives you meaning, that gives you the energy to get out of bed with like a spring in your step every day, that is self-sustaining in the sense of, your happiness is all internal. It's not externalized. You don't depend on things to make you happy, material positions or women. Those are the two things men seriously like are enslaved to in society today. If we're not getting a ton of women, we're depressed. I mean, how many red pill channels have popped up and it's just dunking on women left and right, left and right, shitting on broads. Why? Because it feeds the anger and the resentment men have of being alone, have no, having no intimacy and rejection from women. It hurts, man. It stings to know that you're not wanted physically by the other sex. So how do you manifest that? Feeling outworldly is like consuming content that is on the darker side of the red pill that just only shits on women, has a nihilistic view on the world, like I'm absolutely screwed, this world is screwed, what's the point of even trying? So you get so you get uh, swirled down into that rabbit hole. And in a weird way, that that kind of energy and mentality that you give off will forever seal your fate to that kind of lifestyle. It's sad, man. This is why I don't mess with these black pill creators and some of these red pill guys that just literally regurgitate some of the same shit about women being absolutely garbage and the laws, this and that. And this is why I checked out of the system. I don't want to deal with any women. It's like, dude, your answer, although is an answer, it's not the correct one. If you wanted to check out, that's great. You go your own way. A hey, respect to you, dude, you're your own body. But when you start preaching this stuff to young men that haven't even had a chance to experience or build a life, a fulfilling life, and you're telling them that a huge 
portion of the human experience on this planet, which is being intimate with the opposite sex, is something that they should avoid or curtail at all costs is absolute bullshit. Just because you've been burned and rejected doesn't mean that all men should all of a sudden just try to, you know, put their noses up to women. Like, no, we're too good to mess with you. We're going our own way. This started as an answer for older men that got wrecked in courts, that got wrecked by the uh, by divorce and child support payments. And for some reason, it got distilled down to the younger generation that has no business going their own way. And I'm talking like 17 years old. I'm reading, the guys are messaging me saying like, I don't know what to do. I'm thinking of just having no women in my life ever and be like a monk. And I'm like, dude, you're 17. What are you talking about? You're young as hell. Enjoy life. Build in your 20s, play in your 30s. But these guys are getting drilled by some men that have had horrible experiences with women that all of a sudden their experience is the is the norm for every single man, and it isn't. Yes, more and more people today are not fit for relationships. That includes men and women, but that doesn't mean you have to completely curtail that part of the human experience for every other man and warn them like you're some sort of messiah because you don't even know what kind of childhood trauma you're dealing with in your relationships that allowed you to get in a relationship with an abusive woman who had red flags here and there that took you for all your money, that took the kids, left you, wrecked you in court. You know what I mean? It's like we're not hearing the side of the story, dude, when you start thinking about like people in general and why they get into the relationships and what kind of childhood experiences with the father and the mother people had. You think these men that are all claiming this do you think like a good sizable portion of these men didn't have any childhood trauma? Like, come on, every single guy here listening knows of at least another guy, a close friend that had a screwed up beginning in childhood or some parents that were on the abusive end, a father that drank or wasn't even present or was very physical with the kid, mother, same thing. You're telling me that these people that exist in all these statistics that got together and then the relationship didn't end up working that it was only the woman's fault. It takes two to tango, man. They're both at fault. That's what people don't understand. It says like 80% of divorces are initiated by women. Okay, has anyone done the study to like dive in that 80% and see what those men were like? How many of those men grew up in such childhoods that they became doormats? You think they were all alpha chads they, that led the household, managed the finances, had clear boundaries set with the woman and expectations of how their home life should be? Do you think like all 80% of those men were like that and they were innocent? No, dude, we're, we're just getting told of fairy tales. I mean, you can paint the statistics however you want. I'm sure if we're using logic here, both the men and the women in those 80% of whatever the divorce rates are were trash in some manner that led to the relationship failing. That's the truth. But it's paramount for you as a man to literally build your dream life and have women come along the ride instead of you actively begging them to jump on. So when he says he, he that, that energy exchange that he's talking about in the video is like, it's 100% true. Most men have to convince women to sleep with them because the, the real dark truth is they have very little to offer most of the women they're chasing. Most guys today live very boring lives, man. They play video games all day. You have no hobbies that make you sexy. Like you don't do anything that has built a nice body for yourself, a nice mind for yourself. Like you consume, say, anime, you consume porn, you consume video games. Like where is the intellect being built? Where are you learning some more information, some interesting topics to think about. Where is it? Are you going to go on a date and talk to a girl how you just got a, a 20 uh, KD in one of your lobbies in Call of Duty? Like, is that what we're going to say? You got a nuke and you won the entire lobby? Like, you're so sick, dude. Is that You think the opposite sex finds that interesting? Or you're going to tell her how you were binging on porn and jacked off like six times that day? Really? I mean, let's be real with ourselves what some of the men are like quality-wise today for, for some of these women. I think Quite a few men are, quote, going their own way simply because uh, quite a few of them have not much to offer, man, if we're being real with ourselves. Like most men don't belong to a brotherhood that can help check them and not blow smoke up their asses. A lot of men have convinced themselves why their lifestyle of mediocrity is OK and that they shouldn't aspire to greater things. So then they're OK with sitting at home playing video games. I don't care whether you say it's an hour a day or 10 hours a day, dude. It's the same thing. It just zaps your attention and your time away for more productive tasks. And you go, why well, work really hard? I come home from a 15 hour shift and I just want to game one hour, dude. Is that so wrong? One hour? You could have done something far more productive for your mental and physical health than that one hour of gaming. You just like gaming because it's easier. And I know men are going to be in the comments talking about, oh, he's attacking video games. I'm going to stop listening. All right, brother, you'll come back in a few years when you get bored of games and then you're going to comment saying like, 
hey, I quit a few years later. This dude ended up being right. They do nothing for you, dude. My life got better when I quit. Porn, another addiction men consume all the time. And I constantly tell men, stop consuming porn. It literally rewires your brain and it messes up how your brain processes happiness, man, and arousal. By the time if you end up meeting a real woman and you try to have sex, you're going to, oh, all of a sudden I have ED. All of a sudden I can't get hard. None of this is an accident, dude. You got to think, you really want that to happen to you? Dude, the way society is set up, we're being literally drip fed like dopamine. Dopamine hits everywhere you can go. From the checkout aisle, when you grab that one Kit Kat, dopamine hit. You just lost the battle with your lizard brain and you went and got a candy. You weren't supposed to. To when you turn on your TV and you're being blasted with, with TV shows or video games, whatever, that again elicits the dopamine hit, the dopamine hit, and it's targeting the part of your brain just like social media is that, like the negativity is what you tune into. So you see, that's like dramatic shows, 90 Day Fiance, all these people fighting, drama, is what's dominating TV, what dominates culture, what dominates music. We're just being drip fed dopamine hits. A lot of people are asleep at the wheel. Anywho, moral of the story, focus on building a life that brings you joy and happiness. Try to rewind all the programming, all the trauma you've had from childhood, become a well-rounded person. This is a journey that takes time. Don't expect it to happen overnight. Don't punish yourself. Just start doing something. Even if it's a stupid 10 minute walk or turning on an audible or something, anything is better than nothing, dude. And even if it's just 10 minutes here and there and you think it's stupid, this is not helping you. It is. It is because the next time it'll be 15 minutes, then 20 minutes, then you're going to wake up and now you're doing 60 minutes of whatever activity. Those are countless hours throughout the years that will turn you into a, a well-rounded individual. Everything can be turned around, man. The limitation most people have is in their mind. It's the gray matter. It's not your body. It's not your face. You may not have the best body and you may not have the best face. But even if you had the best body and face, if the thing between your ears is completely messed up and unattractive to people, it doesn't matter. Get in tune with yourself. Go out in nature. Have a real hard conversation with the man you see in the mirror about what you want, who you are, and start writing down goals and achieving them little by little. You know, I have a simple saying that the man you dream of being is the disciplined version of you. That's it. I had this epiphany on one of these hikes. Like, why is it that I'm not the man I dream of? Why am I not jacked? Why am I not rich? Why don't I have X, Y, Z things? Whatever I thought at the time I wanted. What is the difference between me and the man that I would dream about being? This important person, this person that had the ability to help other people, that could be used as an example, that is a good leader, that's like a pillar for the community, for the family, for the brotherhood. Why am I not this guy? And the simple answer is discipline. I don't do what that guy would be doing to achieve that kind of lifestyle. And I know my mind knows exactly what I need to be doing. I need to be get getting up. For example, I used to, but I don't anymore for whatever stupid excuses I concoct in my brain. I used to get up and run 10 miles, you know, take about two hours every day. I'd get up and run 10 miles every day and I'm slowly getting back there. Starts with a walk here and there, a run here and there. My feet are getting acclimated, but I'll get there. But that's one of the things I used to do. Wake up journal all the time. Shoot every day. Things like this. My brain knows. But what's keeping me back is comfort. The comfort of life, man. It's easy to just listen to your lizard brain and I'll put it off for tomorrow. I'd rather take it easy today. Uh, it's like that inner bitch voice. That's the number one enemy men have in life is that little lizard voice in your head. That tells you to take it easy, that you don't have to do anything hard, that you can put it off. That's the voice you don't want to listen to. That's the voice you need to figure out how to crush completely. That's what's holding most men back. I guarantee you that's the little voice in your head that tells you you shouldn't go on that walk. You shouldn't get started at the gym. You shouldn't read a new book. It's too hard. It's too boring. I don't have time. And so on and so forth. You know, you know what I'm talking about. It's there when you make a decision every single day. You wake up with it and you go to sleep with it. Learning to control that little guy in your head is going to be the difference between success and mediocrity in life. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. We'll see you on the next one. Hopefully start live streaming soon. I'm just putting in the final finishing touches on uh, the chats and all that stuff for getting. If you're a member, you already seen there's the little emojis. I have to finish adding a couple and then pick a time. 
when it's best to stream. I have no idea just yet when a, the majority of you are on and I don't know, we'll figure that stuff as we go. Thanks so much for tuning in guys. If you haven't subbed, please do. I see you 85%. Stop peeking, start subbing. Who knows when YouTube may decide to shadow ban this channel, just like the other ones for talking something real about the state of society. We like to retroactively ban. You know how it is. Retroactive consent. See you on the next one.